lots of eating, lots of tastings, and venue scouting, venue scouting, rentals meetings, oh, fun, and marriage fun, fun. license. And marriage license. That's right. Well, I wanted to do a podcast because we got a I got a busy rest of the week, but I wanted to get a podcast in and give some thoughts on Michigan basketball game against San Diego State, the game against Nebraska. Uh, I watched a little bit of the Nebraska game. Um, while we were packing, you know, it's not much to evaluate. Uh, I just, I don't mean, I don't even see Nebraska winning a Big Ten game, to be honest with you. It's one of the most bizarre teams and makeups I've ever seen. My buddy actually made a joke. He's like, Biden needs to just make a law that Hoiberg can go back to Iowa State and just everybody wash their hands of everything and maybe just even blow up the Nebraska football or basketball program. Like, there's no reason that. This should be that bad. I don't understand. I was looking, I'm watching the game, and it appeared that the two guards, I don't even remember what their names were, the two guards probably weighed less than like Hunter Dickinson did combined. They looked like little kids, although that point guard was, I think he dropped like 30 on Michigan. Yeah, one of them was a really good shooter. I mean, they were good. Don't get me wrong, they were good. But they were just like, but they just looked, just looked very small. It was bizarre. Um, they did have a, I liked their center court logo. You liked the center court logo? Yeah, I thought it was a nice touch. How was the, Chelsea's in uh, events, let's say, in yeah. in the uh, pageantry of sports, as you put it. Uh, what would you, what would you rate Nebraska's arena? There were a lot of people. Yeah, I thought the atmosphere was really good. I mean, you could tell their student section was excited to be hosting Michigan. And again, I'll go back to, I thought their court looked yeah, it's cool. Kudos to their athletic department. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool place. Uh, odd sometimes to play there when it's empty, but it is cool nonetheless. But we'll get into some Michigan stuff, um, and then I want to do a little fun round with Chelsea at the end. I watched a lot of the, you know, most of the second half of last game, like I said, it doesn't really count too much. And I watched a lot of the San Diego State game. Better competition, a um, little more of a test, but still not going to be quite what they're going to see in the Big Ten, and um, especially if you want to, you know, make a run in, in March. But some of the keys I took away from the San Diego State game was the threes. I mean, obviously in that Nebraska game as well, like you hit threes, it just makes a massive difference. You can't be shooting twenty three percent from three or whatever they were doing for the first few games. You know, they were eleven from twenty. They're averaging like five before, I think. That's 18 points more. It's just a world of difference. There's really not much else to do besides make your shots there. But the reasons they were making their shots was very different. They weren't getting the same shots they were before. San Diego State wasn't quite, you know, they didn't match up well with them defensively, I think, kind of like what Arizona did. Um, but the way they were getting those shots was a lot different. They are posting up more with Hunter. They were getting a lot more handoffs and open shots, or Caleb was being a lot more aggressive. Um, I think Eli was being Eli. You know, Brandon Johns was confident on one or two of those threes. Um, so it, it was just it was just a lot different. A lot of it came from the offense that they finally played through Hunter. You know, they they weren't just dumping it off to him without a plan. You know, they had. I didn't quite like exactly what they had. They, they started off with Caleb coming, running the baseline and then Eli entering it um, from the wing. So they had two shooters because, you know, where a lot of the help was coming from was the strong side. So they, they started doing that. And I think it was okay. You had Musa opposite and, and Devontae in the top of the key. Musa kind of opposite corner. I mean, if, if you want him to shoot three, he's fine. I think it's kind of up in the air of what he's doing, um, uh, even though he's, he's out now. And I can't even remember what, what he's out for. But anyways, that that sort of game plan was fine. I, I liked more when you had, like, Devontae enter it and just cut immediately. And I think Hunter found him once. Um, and you have somebody opposite. What, what I'm trying to get at is I like somebody opposite. Somebody strong side and somebody opposite. Like, enter it with Eli and then have Caleb opposite wing and maybe like, <clears throat> excuse me, 
you know, Musa will dive down to the opposite dunker spot, or Brandon Johns can even just, you know, spot up on the opposite wing. Um, but to kind of cram the, the strong side is, is, a, is a little tough. Um, you know what I think they should do? What's that? I think Hunter should just shoot threes all day. Well, he hit three. I against, know, and it was State. so fun. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It is I fun. I think that should be the new game plan. Well, I think it was almost like I could see him honestly being like, this is ridiculous. No one else will hit three, so I'm just going to go ahead. And I mean, I love that mentality for him. And he hit three. I mean, he, he, had, he along only, with his he um, only, big Dickinson energy. That's true. Yeah. I don't know why, but... This is a big energetic moment in the game. But it's true. No, up. he uh, he hit the second three, and he did his... Uh, yeah. It was the first time we saw Hunter beat Hunter from last year, I think, energy-wise. <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> like the low punch kind of flex. <laughs> that was good. If you're if you're listening to this, she was doing that in the car while driving. Um, but yeah, that's Hunter shooting threes. I don't even know if he shot against the rest. He didn't have to. It was kind of a joke. The, sh- the shots they were getting, the amount of open shots they were getting, and then they were playing zone. But yeah, basically that, and on top of Kayla being aggressive like there was one really great shot that he had came, came off of a handoff and his back he was kind of cu- coming from the back with his back to the basket and he just knew he was going to shoot it and that was kind of like one of the first times that I saw him string together those types of consistent confident or aggressive shots even if he wasn't confident like we're getting to the point now where we're not looking for confidence and then getting aggressive like we we need aggression and that will turn into confidence and I think you kind of saw that with Caleb um, Eli has been pretty consistent I think Hunter has even showed more aggression uh, but one of the big ones was Frankie coming in and kind of how they've been relying on Devonte to be more aggressive to come into his own and I think for whatever reason He's been more of uh, just more passive, and Frankie's come in, and for better or worse, uh, just been more direct, like more direct line drives, and not making a lot of mistakes. So I think that's where Frankie's minutes are coming from. He had 25 minutes. Devontae only had 17, um, and Juwan I think is just looking for someone to come in and, and be direct, whether whether they're confident or not. Just do something because we can't just go out there and put up the low field goal attempts, put up the amount of turnovers that they are, and score the low amount of points that they are. So there's definitely some spots where they have need uh, you know, somebody else to get in the paint. And um, you know, Frankie did that. Eli's been doing it. And Caleb has been doing it a little bit here and there when he's picking his spots. Um, but he's obviously more effective when he's getting up, putting up aggressive threes. Um, there was a point I wanted to make off of that. Yeah, basically, I wrote down like six points for the game and then some kind of side notes. But one of my points was basically, I said before, I think in the podcast with Ant, where you know we could have Eli go out there and score 18 and put up 13, 14, 15 shots. Um, but that Eli knows and like Jawan knows that they need other guys to come in and be aggressive like Devontae and Caleb. And while that is true to a degree, to a degree uh, I think it's less so than I kind of made it out to be in that podcast. I think, at least from a uh, ball screen standpoint, and what guard you want being the most aggressive, and I, I think that it's going to be Eli. I think that I'm all for upping his usage with ball screens and him being the main guy that gets in the paint and creates. Um, I think you'll see more of Frankie doing that. I think Frankie's a little more opportune and say like ball screen stuff because with Eli ball screen there's like a little more threat of the jumper or from three or from mid range so it helps with the roller and you know just rotations off of everybody else from that standpoint um, but I've kind of changed my tune on that and I, and I hope going forward like they can up their usage with Eli in, in the ball screens um, and you know <clears throat> we didn't have to see it with Nebraska because again that was kind of a joke what they were doing be nicer to 
I mean, it was just like, the, you know, in terms of evaluating. They're trying. They, were they? <laughs> it's like, they, I've never seen more open threes. Wide open threes. I mean, Robbie Hum at one point was like, yeah, I don't even know. Caleb Houston's just shooting wide open threes. I don't understand what is going on right now. That's an elite shooter shooting wide open threes. And it's like, yeah, because they don't, you know, basically, well, I'm not going to be super mean, but it was not pretty. What else we got? Zeb was back. Um, <clears throat> Airball of three against San Diego State. You know, he needed to get his feet wet a little more. Looked great against Nebraska. That was good. Great game to build confidence. Uh, he'll be – well, I say he'll be. There's still a lot of question marks. We'll see what happens, but he definitely has the ability to come in and, and play a huge part uh, with the rest of the season and, and be very productive uh, in the Big Ten play. And just pretty, You know, talent is talent. And, you know, the more direct talent um, that you can get, the better. You know, it was nice to see – Brandon Johns, I had a lot of uh, people uh, tweet at me about Brandon Johns for the Nebraska game because he came out, I think he had 16 in the first half. But basically, he was down, um, was it San Diego State? Yeah, it was San Diego State. He was not playing super great. And I said that, I tweeted that Brandon Johns is a high-level player that doesn't know it yet. And people were like, God, it was like one of my most... Um, how do you call it? Like engaged. Engaged tweets I've had in a long time. People saying like, "Really? Like, what are you talking about? You're insane! Like, we've been waiting on this for four years. He's a senior, blah blah blah." And I had some people be like, "Yeah, I like with some gifts. We're like, you know, like we're like the eyeballs. Like Sue Douglas watching the Nebraska you're the game with president of the Brandon Johns fan club. Is what you're trying to? I say. mean, sure, if you want to call it that. I just believe in Brandon Johns' talent. That's all. And you know, again, it is Nebraska, but he showed that he has talent and the ability to be aggressive and confident. And you just got to show more of that. Like, so many times, I think Ant has even showed in film, like, he's, like, hesitating on the first catch. It's like, dude, you're, like, what, six, seven? Just shoot the ball. Like, you can shoot it. Just shoot it. Be aggressive. You know, you're going to come out if you don't make that shot and if you don't take it. Like, you got to show that you're going to be aggressive and make it. Um, now it helps now that Musa is out, I think. And I don't know how long. I have not looked into it, which is not probably a good thing when you have a Michigan basketball podcast. But the power four spot is pretty up in the air. I mean, Terrence played really great against Nebraska as well. Um, very productive, I think, against San Diego State. If I remember correctly, he played well and had some good minutes. Um, Musa started at San Diego State game. But the power four spot is going to be where there's going to be some rotation. Um, and I think they need to look to – they have been solidifying more of the rotation on their guard spot with uh, Frankie coming in and, and getting those minutes and Zeb coming back and looking good. Um, so they got four really good guards there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Kobe Bufkin. But I think they're they're, they're set there. And, you know, they can play Kale at the three or Terrence at the three. Or, I'm sorry, um, you know, like Zeb or Eli kind of playing a small wing or Terrence at the three. So I think that they'll be fine there. Um but overall, they just looked more smooth against San Diego State. And that was going to be a big test for me. Um, I thought it would be – Nebraska would be a little more of a test, but apparently I've not been watching anything. But they overall just looked more smooth, more cohesive offensively, more direct. Like, whether they were going to make shots or not, like they, they knew where they were going to get shots from. And that was, I think, probably the biggest frustration. Like, you can live with a team – now, fans wouldn't have lived with the team if they were just missing, 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 and being aggressive with certain shots where, like, fans would say, well, they need to change the offense or other guys need to shoot or some guys need to shoot less. Like, no, their biggest thing was they don't, don't care about missing a shot. Just go and be aggressive and put shots up and put it in, you know, get them to the right guys. Like, yeah, Caleb can shoot with a hand in his face. Like, even if he goes 0 for 7 in a game, like, he for the rest of the year, he needs to be shooting those shots because that's what this team needs. It opens up everything else for the rest of the guys. It opens up things for him. Like it doesn't matter. Just be direct and aggressive. And, and it was really, it was really good to see um, during the San Diego State game. Otherwise, I think that's all I've got. Uh, I don't even know who I've got next. To be honest, again, not great uh, when you run a Michigan basketball podcast. For me, be more positive for me. No, I like to be self-deprecating. 
you know, it's like, what the hell is wrong with you, sir? But yeah, they looked good. Uh, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Um, I'm not going to blow up Nebraska performance. Um, they looked really good, really smooth, really confident. Um, but I've been there and played with confidence and then turn around and <laughs> not play with the most confidence in the next game. So it'll be fun to watch. But they, they made those progressions. They, they look like they know more of who they are, and that is huge. Um, and even if, let's say, they, they get in the next game and – Boom, they blow up their game plan, and they look not so good offensively. Like I think they need to stick with what they're inching towards now, um, to, starting with the San Diego State games, starting with the rotation, starting with the types of offense they're running, with the post entries, the off-ball movement that they've been doing, um, the shots they've been getting from Caleb, you know, some of the downhill stuff from Frankie and Eli. Like, Stick with that stuff, and you can throw in some wrinkles here and there, and obviously, you know, Musa comes back, you know, post him up, and you know he'll be he's a kind of a aggressive wild card. Uh, you know, if he'll have it one game, great. If he doesn't, the next game, fine. You can, you know, he's kind of a, a mix and matcher in terms of aggressiveness there, which is nice to have. You need that some games. He can come in and give you, you know, probably eighteen, or he can come in and still be effective and only take two shots, and you know you don't need him. So that's he's a great, great guy to have for that. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun to watch going forward. What is going on? And to end this podcast. I wanted to get some thoughts. I mean, Chelsea, what did you think from <laughs> the Nebraska game? I need to focus on the road. I Do you? Go, no, 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 no. Okay. What did? What, give me, give me a couple of things that you liked saying besides the uh, hundred flags. Um, from the Nebraska game. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the only night. thing you watched. Did you watch any of the San Diego State? I watched a little bit of it. Okay. Um, I and this is because I've heard you talk about it a lot. I feel like they played with a lot more confidence in the Nebraska game. So regardless mm-hmm. of how good or bad Nebraska is, I feel like um, they just played like a little bit more loose and it felt, it was more fun to watch them because I wasn't so nervous. Mm-hmm. I, I love a good 20 point blow. Yeah. Do you notice that um, every time like Michigan has a game, like you're making plans for us? <laughs> is there a reason why you doing that? I in Do you hate Michigan basketball? I love Michigan basketball. I am the biggest Michigan bad bandwagon fan. Oh yeah, are you year. on? Yeah, I think I rival everyone that was in Indianapolis last weekend. <laughs> you <laughs> we went downtown for the um, Big Ten championship game. Obviously Michigan football played in that. And I think Chelsea is used to sports in like enthusiasm, but like it's on another level. It was it was intense. Yeah, it was, yeah, but it was fun, and I do, I think Michigan fandom is, it's not just, like, here in the Midwest, it's all of ours, so it's, yeah, no. it's cool that now I'm a part of Michigan fandom. Go yeah. Blue. Go Blue. Yeah. No, I it's would fun. like to take this time to rebrand your podcast, though, and uh, I think we should start with the What the Hail, and we should move forward. Yeah, no, I, she came up with that from the beginning. I thought that was good, but I'm a little too egocentric to take my name out of the podcast. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Back to the plans thing. I have reversed my ways, and I now have the Michigan basketball notifications on my phone. So I oh. know. I, it was just a lack of knowledge. It wasn't intentional. I, I, I apologize for any Michigan games you had to You miss. did? I really appreciate it. Early you, days of dating. Yeah. You did say that you. We're going to put them in your schedule. I did. I, well, I, I have the, the... I go through individually. I have, like, the ESPN alert. Okay, like I, They're one of my favorite teams. That works a lot. Um, why won't you let me hang my jerseys up? <laughs> That's a, that is a bold-faced lie, and you can tell your followers that. Because I've been trying to get these jerseys hung up on the wall for months now. Um, I even let one sit in our living room as decor for... Um, too long of a time and I keep asking you when we can hang them, when we can hang them according to you, we have the hanging kits but I have yet to see them I have yet to see a hammer or a screwdriver get out the jerseys, do not put the jerseys on me that is, that's 100% on you I wasn't expecting that kind of <laughs> anger well, you want the truth? yeah, no <laughs> I actually knew that I was going to get a rise out of you yeah. it's almost a little too easy Okay, last question before we get out of here. Um, you knew me. 
you know, for a few years before we started dating, how attractive to you was it <laughs> knowing that I was a Big Ten superstar? Oh my God, I mean, I hang my hat on that every day. <laughs> I don't think you care at, at all. Um, I think even when, like, we, I went back overseas to Israel and, like, no, I hated when you went back overseas. Well, I'm saying, like, you're like, oh, yeah, I play basketball. Okay, great. <laughs> I am very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. No, I'm not trying. I'm not certain. I'm not fishing for compliments. I'm I mean, mostly, no, because you're, you're Stu Douglas to me. And, you know, whether you're the Stu Douglas three-point specialist from Michigan. It was so funny. She was like, I don't, when we started dating, you're like, I never, that never looked at you like that. Like, you were, like, I would always see her through friends of friends, and it was home in the summer, and she's like, not going to be paying attention to Michigan basketball. So it was like, I, they said you played basketball, but I have no idea. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I, I can believed appreciate them. That. You believed them. <laughs> I yeah. like, took their word for it. But... Yeah. No, I, I was, it was good. And then when I said I was going to go back to Israel, you're like, no, I don't think you play basketball anymore. I think you're done. I think, you know, a good, like, meniscus injury would be just fine right about that. <laughs> You've never wished an ACL I, on anybody I, besides I, that. No, and I take it back. I'm, I was only kidding. Um, but, yeah, that that should do it for the short podcast. I uh, have an idea of who you should have on next. Who's that? I think you should have on the person that films Shawan shooting his half court shots pregame. Why is that? Because that's one of my favorite parts about Michigan basketball is seeing the half court shots. And I think that person, whoever the the film person is, would have some really interesting stories about what goes into these half court shots. Okay, so that's that's fair. And that might be Tom Myrod. I asked him, am I trying to get him on again? Um, but funny, quick story. Last year, Juwan was doing it a lot more. I, yeah, and I it would be on Instagram, and Chelsea would just like be looking at her phone and be like, "Oh, look, Juwan!" I'm like, "Yeah, it's it a, makes all of them. It's a well." <laughs> so, so then last night, this makes sense for excitement because last night there was like a, we were watching some college basketball game, and there was a three quarter court shot. This guy like heaved up, and it hit the rim, and she was like, "Oh my god!" It was so close. And I was like, are you, wait, are you, like, impressed? She's like, yeah, it was very close. And I was like, oh, this is, a, this is someone who. The half court shot is impressive to Yeah, to everyone. someone who never even heaved it from half court. I was like, all right, I get it. I can appreciate that yeah. appreciation of talent. I think I'm jaded to it, all of it. Yes, it's exciting. Yes. Okay. Um, I do want to pressure uh, Nick Baumgartner and Brendan Quinn into coming out of the podcast, so I'm going to shout them out. Hopefully, they can they can come on. If you guys have any other suggestions for some Michigan basketball alum or people to come in and talk Michigan basketball, I'm all ears and I'm all down for some social media pressuring. But uh, that'll do it for today. Uh, apologies for no guest. Just kind of a weird week with me doing. Was I not a guest? Well, yeah. You were a special guest. You're kind of like a. No, you're 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 a special guest. It's a little Thank different. You. Like you you can kind of come on whenever you want. Like we're not scheduling you. You just kind of hop in. You're like I'm coming on this week, and you're in. Got it. You know. Okay. Noted. Moving forward. Yeah. So I want maybe we should do a Chelsea's corner. Yeah. Like, I like if that. you want to actually watch the game, sit down with me, and I want you to take notes. I do notes. actually watch the game. I know, but I'm saying like your full game. Yeah, I can do that. The next full game, we'll watch. Yep. Count we'll get a couple in. notes. Chelsea's corner. I don't really like that name, though, so I'll keep thinking about maybe. We'll, we'll talk on it. We'll talk offline. We'll talk offline. Right after this, we'll, we will uh, brainstorm, although we have a lot of wedding planning and uh, Christmas gift planning. Apparently, she's already made a list. Anyways, yeah, um, short week, busy week. Uh, so I apologize for, for the short podcast for not, for not very in-depth stuff, but um, got to get a podcast in every week. So we'll be back next week. Don't do the wrap-up sign to me. <laughs> we will be back next week. I was counting my ums. Did you were counting Yeah, them. I was too. I didn't like it, but it is what it is. So we'll be back next week. Thank you for listening, and uh, yeah. Bye. Bye.